Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comms. When I did the Baofeng Mini video recently, fellow radio communications content creator Wildcat Comms in the comments asked if I would put the Quanshang UVK5 on my test gear as it is the radio that he recommends to new users on his channel. Now up here is a card where you can check out his video on the radio and I recommend you do so. I have taken a personally procured UVK5 that you see here and I've placed it on my test equipment and per my common practice I will compare one selected and tested radios performance to this or our device under test. In this case the comparison radio is going to be the Baofeng Mini. Now this is a short data driven video and overall the UVK5 is a popular radio and there's been a lot of created content on it already regarding the capabilities and firmware variations. Now personally I am more interested in raw radio performance metrics within the amateur band of the device under test and that is what this content is based around. The firmware and rabbit hole of the UVK5 is a labyrinth and many of the touted firmware features are dead ends and cosmetic more than practical. That being said let's go over the data. Well let's get down to the data. We start with antenna sweeps at the factory antenna and at VHF we see our antennas behaving like a portable radio antenna should be at VHF bandwidth wise and it is displaying the point of resonance below the two meter band. This is typical of similar Chinese radios I have tested in the past. Our UHF sweep is the same story. The point of resonance falls below the 70 centimeter amateur band and it's likely residing somewhere in the US NTIA spectrum, which jives with the radio's capability of operating in the 380 megahertz range. And this isn't surprising as the low split UHF range is common in commercial Chinese radio services. Now we move along to our rated audio test. In this test, I run maximum volume audio of a strong signal modulated with a one kilohertz tone across a 16 ohm resistor and measure the result with my AC millivolt meter. We are looking at 2.9 volts RMS, so we square 2.9 and divide by 16, and this gives us 526 milliwatts of audio. Now moving on to our transmit tests, starting with VHF on a 25 kilohertz channel at high power. Our frequency error is plus 49 hertz, which is good. Our power output is 4.6 watts, and our deviation is 4.17 kilohertz. Now we move on to UHF, and we see our frequency error is plus 130 hertz, which is still good. That's like three-eighths of a part per million. Our power output is 3.8 watts, and our deviation is 4.18 kilohertz. Now our received tests. Starting on VHF, we are getting 12 dB of Senad on a negative 123.9 decibel milliwatt signal, which is good sensitivity in exceeding the published specifications of the radio. And on UHF, we see that a signal of minus 122.7 decibel milliwatts is getting us 12 dB, which is three tenths under the published specifications, but sufficiently sensitive for service. Now I'm going to perform a relative selectivity test of the Quanshang UVK5. And spoiler alert, it's not very good. I did a short on this some time ago. So we're going to go ahead and generate a signal at a minus 100 decibel milliwatts at the tune frequency. And you can see it, and we're minus 99 on the signal strength display here. Now let's go ahead and drift off frequency, and we're going to go 20 kilohertz. Okay, we're 20 kilohertz away. Now typically what I'll do is I'll generate a minus 60 decibel milliwatt signal 20 kilohertz away from the tuned frequency of the selectivity test. So let's go ahead and do that now. Which it's not doing so hot. But what's interesting is, is you can watch it. Now we're at minus 60. You can watch it. It's totally full bore receiving that signal 20 kilohertz away. Now we're going to repeat that identical test with the Baofeng Mini. 
minus 100 decibel milliwatt signal being generated and now we're going to go 20 kilohertz away Now we're 20 kilohertz away. Now let's go ahead and adjust our level to minus 60 decibel milliwatts. And now we're at minus 60 and you can hear our signal, but you're not seeing that same phenomenon. So we've got the receiver tuned to a frequency of 146 megahertz. We're going to generate a signal 20 kilohertz away. So at 146.020 megahertz at a level of minus 90 decibel milliwatts, which is not a very strong signal. So you can see the squelch is open. We're going to generate our signal now. And you can hear our signal. Now let's review our spectral purity test at VHF of the UVK5. Our fundamental is 36.21 decibel milliwatts. What we do now is compare our subsequent second, third, and fourth harmonics to this signal. All should be 40 dB down from our fundamental and below a level of 25 microwatts, which is minus 16 decibel milliwatts. Our second harmonic is at a level of minus 11.08 decibel milliwatts. Now this is below the 40 dB threshold, but it's above the 25 microwatt window at a level of 78 microwatts. So it fails spectral purity standards for part 97. Our next two harmonics are below both thresholds. We will sum and average these measurements and this will provide a decibels below carrier measurement for our review. Let's go over our results. Antenna data isn't on this list, but the antenna for the UVK5 is superior to the one provided with the Mini. The one provided with the Mini did not test well, and I have a couple videos on this if you're interested. Rated audio. The Baofeng Mini delivers twice as much audio power across the load than the UVK5. Frequency stability. The UVK5 exhibited superior frequency stability. Both radios were under one part per million, which is very good. VHF RF power. Both radios tested are literally neck and neck in this metric. UHF RF power. The Mini provided one watt more than the UVK5 in this metric. FM deviation. This was measured on both 25 kilohertz and 12 and a half kilohertz channels. Both radios perform within specification. Now here is a subjected transmitted audio test for your listening pleasure. Rhinoceros, this is platypus. I am marsupial at this time. Over. Rhinoceros, this is platypus. I am marsupial at this time. Over. VHF receives sensitivity. Like the VHF RF power test, the radios are neck and neck in this metric. UHF receives sensitivity. In this test, the UVK5 receiver sensitivity was superior to the Baofeng Mini. It is important to remember that both radios are in that Goldilocks zone of FM portable radio receiver sensitivity, which resides between minus 120 decibel milliwatts and minus 125 decibel milliwatts. VHF spectral purity. In this test, the Baofeng Mini is more spectrally pure than the UVK5. The average spurious emissions, decibels below carrier, are close, but the UV5 or the UVK5 fell below the Part 97 standard spurious emission limit of less than 25 microwatts, with the second harmonic being 78 microwatts and the Baofeng Mini's maximum spurious emission being 9 microwatts. Relative selectivity. This is where the UVK5 really fell apart. In this test, we start with a minus 100 decibel milliwatt signal on the tuned frequency. 
We then tune the signal generator 20 kilohertz away from the tuned frequency. Then we increase our signal to where we can just hear our tone on the receiver. On the Baofeng Mini, we start to hear our signal at a level of minus 65.3 decibel milliwatts. On the UVK5, the signal is audible just above minus 90 decibel milliwatts. This test was performed with the factory firmware and the EG Zoomer firmware and with the transmit open and locked to the amateur band. This is a textbook example of poor receiver selectivity and in my opinion is due to the much touted capability of the UVK5 functioning as a general coverage receiver which in reality is more cosmetic than practical. Two of the big three, specifically Kenwood and Yesu, have been able to do this with success. And probably the best performing example of this in my experience is the Kenwood THD74. But you get what you pay for. So in conclusion, the largest problem in my testing of this particular radio has been the lack of receiver selectivity. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Until next time.